We are here for What's Up This Week. This is a super short episode where we share what is going on this week that's really interesting in the world of marketing and life. And then we still have our short episode of Ask Us Anything. And then at the end of the week, we have like a 10-minute episode of new tactics and tips. And thanks for checking it all out. So what is going on this week that's super interesting? Well, you may or may not have heard but Google has just rolled out the beta of Gemini. What is Gemini? So it's another AI chatbot. And Google has been has their BARD, B-A-R-D, has been their version of ChatGPT. BARD is now gone. As of this moment today, it is now called Gemini. Why does this matter? It's not just a name change. You can go now and you can use Gemini. And you go to gemini.google.com. And the reason I think it's pretty amazing, unlike ChatGPT, ChatGPT does not allow you to use the most up-to-date information. It's a few years old. That's where it stops. If you said, hey, write me a blog post with the news from the last five days, it can't do that on ChatGPT because it doesn't use the actual information that is coming out on the internet daily. But Gemini from Google does. So you can go on to gemini.google.com right now and you could say, give me all the news stories in the world of email marketing in the last 30 days and we'll summarize that the same way ChatGPT would. But also, it allows you to do a lot graphically. So if you go on to Gemini, you could say, draw me an illustration, a cartoon of a marketer getting frustrated with the amount of spam in their inbox. And we'll literally create that cartoon for you. So there's a lot more interactivity, a lot more stuff that you can do with Gemini. Right now, in terms of an app, it's available on Android. They're coming out with the iOS app. So this is new from Google. One of the things that I'm using it for quite a bit, which it's been incredible for, is creating quizzes. As many of you know, quizzes are a fantastic lead gen play, a fantastic way to grow your database. So if you literally go on Gemini at gemini.google.com, and I keep sharing the URL, I don't, I don't get paid by them or whatever, I just think it's really cool. If you go on there and say, create me a quiz about, take a test and see if you're a great email marketer, and you tell Gemini, make this quiz about being a great email marketer, make questions about deliverability and design and whatever, and make it less than two minutes to take the quiz, it literally will spit out the quiz for you. You could ask it to make it some cover art and a logo, and you're on your way. So check that out. Gemini, which just rolled out this week. Something else that's big this week that came out was the LinkedIn algorithm report. This is something that's put out by a consulting firm called Just Connecting. And Just Connecting is one of the leading voices as it relates to LinkedIn-specific engagement metrics. And the report is super interesting because what it does is, and we'll put a link to it in our show notes, it breaks down every type of content that you could post or the way that you post, whether it's a video or written in text or carousels, which you can't even really do sort of anymore on LinkedIn. It should, should you comment on stuff? Everything. But one of the things I thought that was super interesting in the report was the impact on when you go ahead and you post anything on LinkedIn. What is the actual impact when you put a link in your post that takes somebody off of LinkedIn? Well, let's say you want to promote a, a new guide that you've created, all right? And in your post on LinkedIn, you say, and here's a link to it, and you put a link off to your website or whatever. This study came out and said, when you put that link to an external site or page in your post, you will lose up to 40% of your reach, all right? And which means up to 40% of the of the reach of them circulating it, the algorithm is going to slow it down because it doesn't want people leaving the LinkedIn platform. What a lot of people have done and do, and, and this is interesting in the report, is instead of putting in their post, what they do is they'll immediately after they post or in their post, they'll say, link to the report in comments. And they'll go into the comments on their own post and they'll post a link to that report in the comment section. But now LinkedIn obviously knows what's going on. So now what's happening is LinkedIn is sort of burying those comments. Uh, they're not listing it as one, of the, as one of the relevant comments on your own post. 
And so it's actually depressing performance by putting the link in the comments by about 15%. So you can't game the system with LinkedIn and try to put your external link in the post or in the comments. But here's what you can do and what is not, LinkedIn is not knocking down the circulation or the engagement when you do this tactic. What you want to do is you don't put the external link to whatever it is you're promoting. doesn't matter what it is. You don't put it in there when you hit post. But literally you wait 10 minutes. You wait 10 minutes. And after it hits that 10 minute mark, you go in and you edit your post. And as long as you wait 10 actual minutes and then you edit the post, you could put your link to the external link that you want to use and you will not lose any of your engagement or circulation. But here's the thing. You can't additionally change more than 15% of the content of that post. So you can't just go into the post, completely rewrite it, and then put the external link and think you're gonna be fine. Basically, all you wanna be changing is a few words and that external link. And you do that, and that is the way to link to stuff externally based on all the new data that has come out. And along those same lines, if you link to a video, because that's also content, to an external like YouTube link, for example, right out of the gate, as opposed to putting in there later on, after waiting that 10 minutes, it'll actually cut your reach by 50%. So this new data that's come out about LinkedIn and how to actually do the post and everything, that's this week. I thought that was super, super interesting. And then probably the most important thing this week, I mean, hello, is this week is the premiere week for Love is Blind 6. Now, you're, if you're a new listener, you're like, what did he just say? Is he talking about the reality show? What's this dude doing? Yes. Love is Blind 6, which is on Netflix. Love is Blind is the best show on all of television. I don't care what you think. You're wrong. Why? Basically, Love is Blind, if you've never watched this, you have people, men, and you have women who've never met each other. They can't see each other. And they go into these pods and they date. And there's a wall in between them. That's why they call it Love is Blind. And they never get to see each other until they get engaged. And they get engaged without seeing each other. And then after they get engaged, then they get to see each other. And then it's amazing. The show is a disaster because the people, they fall in love without seeing each other after just a few hours. Then they see each other and they're not really into what each other looks like. And it gets super awkward and end up breaking up. And I'm here for it. I love it. It's fantastic. So that is premiering this week. Love is Blind 6. So yeah, and also make sure you register for Guru Conference. It is the world's largest free virtual email marketing two-day event. It's going to be wild. I'm going to be there. GuruConference.com. Please go register now. We just opened that up. And if you don't hate this podcast, give it a five-star review. Leave a review. Tell everybody that I like horrible TV. I don't know. Do stuff. And hope you found this useful. Thanks for being here. And check out the episodes later this week.